doesn't throw any martyrs. I mean, I if he doesn't draw martyrs, it actually seems pretty good for Owen. Okay. Right? Yeah. Then he's got a black-white sideboard against the zoo deck. Yeah. That's uh. sideboard's gotta be good, right? <laughs> and he could, like, range here for double martyr. Uh. I'm still, I'm sticking with it. No, <laughs> I'm sticking with Owen. Get that one. I respect that. Deck It's like you're, uh, you've got your money money on Kami of Crescent Moon against the burn deck. <laughs> it's not quite that. That was always the worst feeling whenever you're playing, like, like oh, I'm going to try this deck out with Kami of Crescent Moon or Howling Mind, and your opponent's uh, like, turn one mountain. Yeah, like, oh, lava spike you. Oh, <laughs> crap. Oh, man. I can't even play to these cards in my head. Why do I even bother playtesting? John rolls a two. Luis rolls, uh, I believe that's a 13. Luis will be on the play this game. See, Luis looks like he has a Keeper. potentially winning combination of cards there. Yeah, I mean, he has a turn three gifts. Yeah. It's pretty good. So we can get, if, how soon we can figure out what, uh, Oh, well, I guess we know right away. Is that a guilty Phallus? It's playing Elves. Ooh, that's exciting. I love Elves. Yeah, um, yeah. No? Oh, Malira. Malira, okay. So, but potentially, Luis just wins this game next turn. Yeah, he just gifts for the two-card package. He can just go Elish Norn and Unburial Rites. John will be forced to put both cards in his graveyard, and then he can untap and just put an Elish Norn on the table. Yeah. It's going to be pretty rough for John to win when there's an Elish Norn on the table. There was a whole thing on Twitter the other day about, uh, I guess a couple weeks ago, where uh, Aaron was kind of... Aaron Forsyth, the head of uh, Magic R and D, MTG Aaron, on Twitter was, oh, there's a spell skate. It's really doing Birds of Paradise. And he's talking about the idea that you just gifts for a two card package, so that you get both cards in your graveyard, so a reanimation target and a reanimate spell that you can flash back. Um, and he's just like, does that seem unfair? So it looks like he, uh, we're gonna get an Elish Norn. From uh, Luis, uh, you know, he just was wondering whether or not you know people feel like the card should be around. You know, this is just too, you know, stupid. I think it's fine. Oh, now now he's got a, now he's sifted the uh, Elish Norn back, and it looks like he's going to go with Iona and just name green. Seems reasonable. What, what color did he name? We have four spots remaining in a booster draft. Four spots I mean, in Iona, draft. naming green, you can still lose. Sure. Play untaps, please, please. Iona. Yeah, what color do you name? Pretty sure you name green, but... But you could win on... I mean, if you just name green, though, he Oh, can you can't birthing pod, you. you can't... Green. He did name green. He named green, okay. And, I, I mean, the green is a... That's fine here. It's unlikely your opponent has the one of Shriekma on their hand, and... So there's Ranger of Eos. So Malaya's still in play. So if he... If he has Murderous Red Cap. If he has Murderous Red Cap, he could just kill him here. Yeah, he could just kill him next turn. I mean, assuming, I mean, you know, there's some counter magic, obviously, in Luis's hands. But does he have a hard counter? Does he just delay the inevitable with Roman? I mean, depending on how long you can delay the inevitable for, yeah. delaying the inevitable is probably fine because right. you have a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> You've got a short little clock there. You have the shield of Ameria. John cracking the special end. 
Uh, I assume he'll be grabbing a uh, Temple Garden in this spot. Ooh, Goblet Shrine. <laughs> yeah, I guess no reason to get more green mana when yeah, you your eye owned it. it out. Yeah. And a Viserys here on the table. So I wonder if with the, the new Machaeus, do you open up another level for this deck to go? That's a good question. I hadn't thought about that. Oh no, but you don't get you, you get undying. It doesn't it doesn't work the same, quite the same way as persists. I'm dying to play Undying with Spikes. Just kill people. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> oh. Crack. Now, next turn, I, Luis can just activate his colonnade and kill John, right? Yeah. So, well, there's a bird up. Oh, there is bird up. Okay, never mind. Bird's probably on a. Uh, that has nothing to do with that. Gonna block an Iona here, and I don't know that he that if you're not gonna kill him if Luis wants to cap out. So he's got to respect being able to counter the red cap. Yeah, I mean, if if a red cap comes down, you, you have to you have to block it. with bird here and scry. Think. Yep. Sacrificing it to Osiris here to scry. Start on the bottom. The birds was already in play. It's an oblivion ring. To ultimately just target the spell skate, I assume. Yeah, I mean it's uh at least just goes for the spell skate right away. Yeah. Murderous red cap check. And there was no murderous red cap there. I believe Luis now has the uh, remand in hand also. So he has remand plus path. It's going to be pretty hard for John to go off through both of those. Seven, that'll put Luis at five. Luis is going to go ahead and use Path to Exile, Tyreen Malira. That's an optimistic scry. That is an optimistic <laughs> scry. I mean, you never know. There could just be like a slaughter pack out of nowhere right here. Yeah. Maybe he's hoping Luis will animate his colony mate if he has. And that's it. The game one handshake. I like it. I appreciate that. Kindness. And that's what we saw Jerry do in game one of his feature match. Right. He just gifts it, he just cast gifts, got an Imperial Rights and an Iona, and then... But people are, are well aware of the stack, so people should, if you... You know, people should have a plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this, is, this is a deck you, 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 you know, you're, you're certainly dedicating some space in your sideboard to coming into this event, right? It's difficult to not respect the format's ability to do that. Yeah. 
two spots remaining in the Bruce Dread. Two spots. It's going to be interesting uh, how they sideboard. I'm not sure what type of cards John's going to have post board here. I mean, there are a lot of different options that the Birthing Pod deck has when it's playing against these Tron decks. Yes. You oftentimes want uh, some number of, like, I think, there's normally a Harmonic Sliver in his main deck. He's probably going to want to go up to two of that. Sure. Um, he needs some graveyard disruption, perhaps surgical extraction. Right, like surgical extraction to probably saw be pretty brutal. It was played against Jerry at a great effect. Yeah. Now, what what is what do you think Luis is doing here? What what are the options you have with the Tron deck? Um, engineered explosives seems to be something that most people have. Right. This type of matchup. So you can just have it sitting out there and hit a Malira. And... Yeah, I mean, you can just... You can disrupt the combo while it's happening. Uh, you, you you bring in, like, more disruptive elements to beat the combo. I mean... Tron is one of those decks where the fatty plan just wouldn't work. The sideboard, yeah. my, my beloved sideboard plan. For... Bring in a Baneslayer Angel. This is uh, Jake Van Lumen's plan for everything. If it's game two and you're playing Jake Van Lunen, he brought in Baneslayer Angels. Yeah, I'm going to kill you with Baneslayer Angel. Nobody's Not now. Game two. Not now. We told them. <laughs> I do it like every matchup. It always works. You're just counting on them thinking that now that they know, you know that they know. That I won't do it. That you won't do it, but yeah. you know that they know that you know, so you're just yeah. going to do it. I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay. Nobody, nobody. This is a very sophisticated plan of yours. Yeah. It just goes deeper and deeper, Jake. Think about it. The slivers, everybody knew. <laughs> it's true. Who didn't know? It's true. <laughs> well, what can they do? Just go like eight levels deep. Yeah. What are they going to do? It's a Bates Lair Angel. <laughs> What's the fastest turn that the um, Burning Pod deck can go off? The, the Malira project. Uh, turn three. Yeah. Just, just play Sarah, Sir, Malira, Kitchen Banks. <laughs> just done. Done. Yeah. Well, that, that actually won't do it, right? Because we have to assume that Luis has, like, infinite... Like slaver lock um, Infinite slaver yeah. lock. Yeah. Yeah, infinite life does not beat Luis. Because he'll trumpet with infinite turns? He can trumpet with, yeah. He can deck you. Yeah. There's an Ulamog. The infinite gyre. Both players just keep. And turn one. Complete. Uh-oh. Set up for it. I mean... Spell snare mana up, though. You can't... Would you just, if you had Malira, would you just run it out right here? Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. And the Tronics rarely play Spell Snare. They're usually on like Condescendence and Remands. Sure. Just life totals. John at 18. Did he pay? Turn two! two. Complete! Complete. <laughs> Some foreshadowing <laughs> happening here. Like, uh, I don't really want to tap out for this stupid Azorius signet here. But I will. Wow. Oh. Attack first. Yeah, obviously. For the value. You could turn three of them with a red cap, too, if you go turn one bird. Sure. Turn two. Seer Malira. Oh, this looks like a land coming into play tapped. Oh, no. Oh, uh, it's another black source. It's a wall oh. birds. Ben Hayes is happy somewhere. Still looking at two more players for a booster draft. Everybody loves a wall What an awesome card. Yeah. One of the great combos that never was that a thirst for knowledge.
Oh no, he transmuted for an Ursa piece. So, Malira combo two thirds engaged, Urzatron two thirds engaged. Who wins this race? It should be interesting. I think the. Uh, so, if there's a murderous red cap in hand. Which it looks like there is. That's, That's game. It. Oh, wait, there could be a path to exile here. Oh, yeah, yeah, there could be a path. So he didn't, I thought he played the Urza piece, but he did not. Oh, this turn he didn't attack, yeah. Pushes a card. That was about as good of a draw as John could have had. Yeah. <laughs> so he's... Uh, get in for a sad one. Sad little one. Stomping grounds and pass the turn over to Luis. Stomping grounds in John's deck. I'm assuming that's for an ancient grudge splash. Sure, and just also like gives you like one of your green sources helps pay for a red cap if you don't have double black. Yeah, that's reasonable. I guess because like you're actually only... missing that attack with Malaya is pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty huge here because like gonna... that two points like he he has it's a full turn off yeah. the clock. Yeah, and he's got some damage with the red cap like. Kind of looming there. So yeah, they were done. That was a redundant Tron piece. Another tower power. Who's going to seven here? Seven, which would be five. Should be five. I oh, know, so he goes to four and then one and then can sacrifice the red cap to the seer. So it doesn't take a turn off by not attacking the Malira. But it does if Luis has a removal spell or. Six mana. Seven mana next turn. Seven mana, but nothing cheaty, right? No. No broken mana draws. No, no. Uh, so both, both players are a little short of their. Combo right now. Alright, you're at four. Potential three because of the Cyrus here. And it's now or never for Luis. He's got to, uh, he's got to play something this turn. Oh. Yeah, he's dead on board if he doesn't have a removal spell. So we see a quarter calling. All right, so we're going to cord for three. Go get a kitchen, thanks. Yeah. And that seems like the best thing you can do in this spot. Oh, oh go get the liar, obviously. That seems yeah, yeah. way better. For, forgot he didn't have that, yeah. <laughs> if Luis at four, it becomes easy to think, oh, we're just attacking him to death. And I mean, that's the nice thing is that he can attack him and then force Luis to have something. Right, and force, well, force Luis, if Luis tries to path, he can just kill Luis in response. Yeah. He can just so kill Luis needs two removal good. spells here. Attack him. Yeah. And Luis scoops it up. So the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is good. For I mean, he sometimes. also had the combo online, though. Yeah. Get a look at uh, the old with the new. The side deck was eight one yesterday. You know, no sense of uh, how many buys he had yet. And I mean, we haven't even seen a birthing pot out of him yet. No. Are people are people playing the deck without birthing pot at all? Uh, no. I mean, it's. I guess it's possible. 
Well, it certainly existed uh, before Pod, right? Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Uh. Well, I think modern has an existence. Sure, but I'm saying like the combo has existed. Uh, the Malira combo? Maybe not. Well, Malira and Pod, weren't they in the same set? Sure, but I mean, I, I feel like people were playing the combo before they were playing with Birthing Pod. With Birthing Pod? That's fair. I can see that. You know, it's just one of those things, like with Birthing Pod, it seems so obvious. Yeah, Birthing Pot's so good in this deck. And it, like the fact that you can you know, restart your chain with Ranger VS. Right. And the, and the thing is, so one of the, one of the knocks on Birthing Pot at Pro Tour Honolulu, right? like, why aren't more people playing Birthing Pot? Like, we saw you know, two players in the top 16, I think. One player in the top 8, one player top 16 with the, with the archetype. Uh, so why aren't more people playing? In fact, it's obviously super powerful. You, know, you get to set up these kind of crazy locks and do all this cool stuff. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, it was only one player that we So we did a deck deck with good Dennis. Um, but the problem is, when you have a, a, a deck built around a card, a birthing pod deck, like, the no deck is pretty much a big pile of poop if you don't draw your birthing pod. Or if someone kills your birthing pod, which often happens in games two and four. So what's interesting about this deck is that it's not a birthing pod. Right? No, it's a combo deck. Card that has a, a number of different ways to find, you know, it has, at the, 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 word, the least efficient way, it just has, like, scrying with the seers. You know, where you get to, like, just scry away some creatures, but you have, you have some tutoring with the Ranger Vios, you have Court of Calling, you have Birthing Pod, you know, you have a lot of different ways to find, uh, to assemble your, your combination, and you can just naturally draw it. <laughs> I think I just broke it, by the way. I know yeah. I'm going to play Modern from now on. Oh, are we going to do it? We're going to build Crawblade? Crawblade? Yeah, man. <laughs> the trepidation <laughs> playing Crawworm deck? Yeah, man. I love it. <laughs> Crawblade. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I'm thinking, like, why not just build, build the Malira deck exactly how it is? Tons of mana guides, quarter colleagues, for the pods, the whole deal. And then just put in one mirror entity. Think about the ability to just cord for three, get a mirror entity. Oh, wow. Your opponent just dies, right? Yeah. Like with elves, that's how I won like more sure. than 50% of my games. I just cord for a mirror entity. I wouldn't even combo people. I mean, you could certainly bring that in as a sideboard option, too, in certain matchups, right? Yeah. I mean, it seems better than Baneslayer Angel, and I've been doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's working fine. Lots of fun. So, uh, Luis is not going to start on seven. I see, I see two lands in Arman. He's clearly going to keep. Oh, and there is Graf Digger's Cage. Ooh. Is that our first cage on camera? I think it is our first cage on camera. I know Sh Shadi Osaka had that main deck in his top 16 deck in Honolulu. I know, I saw that. That was kind of crazy Two. to me. Yeah. He thought Umbarrel Rights was going to be a lot bigger than it was. There's an expedition map. Expedition map is one of those well, cards. Well, I mean, I think he's not so, but also with Tezzer, he, he had Tezzer and Agent Abolus. He can so, make it a 5 5. So he can make it a 5 5. Like, there was a, a little less downside. Like, sometimes you almost. Again, we talked about getting a critical mass of certain card types. That deck needs a certain amount of artifacts. Yeah, I mean, it just costs one. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, you're just, you know, when you're upping your Tesseract. They might have also bought Faithful Sleuthing. It's going to be a bigger card, right? Like, and Flashback in general. But, like, it's good against Lingering Souls, right? Yeah, I'm sure you got, like, a lot of, like, random value out of it against all sorts of Because right, cards can't be played from your graveyard either, right? Yeah. Yeah. My poor spider spawning deck in standard. It's just like, takes such a beating from that card. It's bad enough I have to deal with Nihil Spellbomb. So there's the Malaya. And uh, it's going to be very difficult to combo with the Graph Digger's Cage on the table. Fortunately for John, uh, oh, we're, we're he can just. He can just uh, use his birthing pot and find his harmonic sliver. Get rid of it. Sure. As I said before, he's probably bringing an extra copy of that. 
you'd expect the uh, Tron deck to have artifact fate. Yeah, the for wall you. of roots. He's like, yes. are you gonna let that resolve? Swamp. There's a bird. All right, let's see. I love a wall of roots. The first <laughs> Tron pieces for Luis here. Rashad just whispered in my ear the thing you and I have both been thinking. Love wall of, wall of roots. <laughs> I have been thinking that. Oh, and there's a Raffiga, or a Day of Judgment. Sweep it away. Nice thing is a lot of people might wonder why Luis would be playing a Day of Judgment when Wrath of God is legal in the modern format, but he has Gifts Ungiven in his deck. So he wants to be able to cast Gifts Ungiven and get both Wrath and you, the other Do card. you know which one he played? I can't see. I, just, uh, I, I didn't see either, but he's probably playing one of each. Can you, do you guys so. know what he played, Wrath or Day? Just out of curiosity? Day, day of Judgment. Yeah, a lot of the time as the gift decks, you want to play like three Wrath effects. Like you'll see decks that have like a Hallowed Burial, a Wrath of God, and a Day of Judgment. That way you can give some to your opponent's end step and they have to give you a Wrath of God. They have to give you one of them. Yeah. Modern is a format with a big enough card pool where you know, you have access to three white. Gra Graph Digger's Cage is just first. opponent can't play, right? Or is it can no one play? Um, it's new enough where I haven't played with it quite enough to know that for sure, so we should look that up. All right, uh, Talisman for Luis. Continuing to develop his mana. Still very far off Tron here. Right, he's two, two, only one third of the way towards Tron. He has, I mean, a lot of land. He could always get a piece with his uh, expedition map. Yeah, and he's widely, wisely waiting. Until yeah, no, he's no, off nobody, the piece. nobody can cast cards in graveyards or libraries. Okay. So. So that worm from Cold Snap. Searching library, you can't hang like a worm. Yeah. It's <laughs> the hate for that. So we just uh, corded up a. The, the, the cage stops that too. Oh wow! Is that what just happened? Oh yeah. no, that doesn't stop it. No. Oh no, from libraries. Or libraries, yeah. I was looking at the can't cast cards. There's only one card you can cast from your library. So wait, did Name. he did he cord it up and then it just, yeah, and it then it just went away? Yeah. yeah, Court of Calling doesn't do anything when wow. there's a Graph Digger's Cage on the table. So what happens to it? It just it, tries to enter the battlefield and it goes... He goes, selects goes, it. He selects it and then... Does it go to the happens. graveyard or does it go to his back into his deck? It just stays where it is. It stays where it is. You stay. It, it stays where it is. And then weird. Back. That's weird. That is weird. Craft Digger's Cage, so crazy. I don't feel good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm putting one of those in my gut all day. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> Ooh, and Tower of Power for Luis. Now, uh, so now next turn he's going to have the... Map to go on this one. Yeah. Yeah. John's end step. For the 10 a.m. sealed event. If you'd like to get into this event, please come up to that stage to sign up. Still taking signs for Booster Draft, Twisted Draft. So that'll mean that after Luis cracks his map on John Sensep and then plays the uh, the mine that he's missing, is he is he missing mine or he's missing power plant? Okay, once he plays that power plant, he'll have access to 13 mana next turn. There's Revelark. There's your man. All right, and a thirst for knowledge. Dump that signet. So let's see, did he draw the power plant off the thirst or nope? He just maps for it. He can just map for it. So 13 mana available for him this turn. You can see uh, he has an Ulamog. I wonder if he sides if he's bringing in the cage if he sides out the unburial rates package. Uh, I imagine he does. He was actually on day one I heard him when I was wandering around through buys, he was talking to Jerry and he was like so we're bringing in Graph Digger's Cage and leaving it on Burial Rites. And Jerry's like, that seems kind of awkward, right? And he's like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if they're still doing that. <laughs> wow. Cage just shuts this deck off. Yeah. They like, just have to natural uh, a harmonic sliver. 
Yeah, you can't even pod for the harmonic sliver. It's pretty rough. And there's Amiria. I'll name a color relevant to you. I'm going to assume green. Yeah, I assume green. I mean, you really just need to like load like four to six artifact destruction spots. Whoa! Yeah. It's Whoa! Necrotel. I think it's white. It wasn't black is what we've determined. He did not name black. We're trying to figure out exactly what color he named. <laughs> he discarded a remed and a path to his thirst for knowledge. Yeah, I think we're going to see. I think, well we're, I think we're going to see an ancient monster here. Oh, the ancientest of monsters! <laughs> Can I have another turn? Can you yeah. please sacrifice six permanents? I've been touched by the nudely appendage, the uh, flying spaghetti monster himself. Coming to sh show all the Pastafarians what he's made of. And Rockel, the eons torn. Zedek's not, you know, just conceding here. That's somewhat surprising. I mean, he's got to sacrifice six permanents right now. I mean, literally getting annihilated. <laughs> Actual annihilation happening on the table right now. We Scott Vargas with the... Uh, I'm a two. <laughs> with the alternate art M. Rockle in play. Oh, is that... Uh, oh, That's a pre boy. <laughs> <laughs> and for good measure. <laughs> Kitchen thinks. There's an actual Rise of the Eldrazi going on right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. A decisive win for Luis Scott Vargas yes. there. Many mythic ancient beasts. Yep. Nice deck. You got oh, yeah. an answer for my cage? <laughs> well, Graftigger's cage. We just saw the power. A Dark Ascension card right there. Yeah. 